so in module 6 we have to learn about radar engineering which is an application of microwaves so in this first particular lecture we will be seeing about the basics of radar the simple block diagram of a radar and the basic radar equation now we will start with the introduction of a basic radar okay what is a basic concept of a radar and what do you mean by the acronym of radar so radar it is an electromagnetic system obviously we are considering the propagation of electromagnetic waves which is an alternative approach to extend vision ability okay so we are making a inference on what we cannot see that is we are going to have a alternative approach to the extend vision ability it is an electromagnetic system for detection and location of reflecting objects so the basic concept of radar it is a means of gathering the information about the distant objects of target by sending the electromagnetic waves at them and analyzing the received echoes so we are going to transmit a electromagnetic wave and when it hits a reflecting object we are going to analyze the received echoes so the acronym of radar is for radio detection and ranging okay so radio detection and ranging is what you mean by the meaning of radar now the basic principle of the radar basic objective was to measure the range to the target but well designed modern radars they can extract more information than merely the range so initially or the primary design concept of radar was just to measure the range but nowadays it is going to extract more and more information basically an elementary radar system consists of transmitter and receiver each connected to a directional antenna so in uh, original cases we had only a single antenna that is antenna was working as a duplexer and connecting to the transmitter and receiver that was our elementary radar system the transmitter transmits electromagnetic energy through the directional antenna and the intercepted energy from the target re-radiates in all direction and the re-radiated energy in back direction towards the receiver it is of prime importance in radar system because that is the one which we are going to analyze to detect the range or the other features so by analyzing the echo signal we can have the following information that is we can have the information of the position of the object distance that is the range of the object from the location of the radar so this was the primary concern when we considered about the elementary radar our main intention was to measure the range of the object but actually we could uh, extract more information for example it's like size of the object whether the object is stationary or moving velocity of the object distinguish friendly and enemy aircraft whether the target is moving or stationary whether the target is moving towards the radar or away from the radar and the direction of movement so these are the things we could analyze from the echo signal which is being re-radiated back to the receiver side now this block diagram explains about the basic principle of radar as you can see there is a transmitter and receiver which is connected to a single antenna so this single antenna will be working as a duplexer for both the transmission and reception and here we have shown a particular target so capital r represents the range to the target from the antenna till the target so what do we do here we are going to transmit say a electromagnetic wave to the antenna which is being radiated into the space okay so when the transmitted signal it is going to hit the target there will be some echo signal which is be given back to the antenna okay so this energy it will be radiated this transmitted signal energy it will be radiated into the space and some of it it will be hitting the target and it will be returned back as an echo signal to the antenna so now the antenna's function is to receive back this echo signal and give it back to the receiver where it is being analyzed to get the information of the target so here we are performing the target detection and information extraction 
so what will be the time taken for the wave say to go to the target hit back and then receive back at the receiver side so the time taken will give us the idea about this value r or the range okay so the range is the most basic factor which we are going to analyze about the target so the elementary radar make sure that we will get an idea about the range r we can add more features or we will be able to find more features of the target okay so the angle location of the target it could be found out from the direction the narrow beam width of the antenna points when the received echo signal is of maximum amplitude then we will get the idea about the angle or the location of the target again if the target is in a moving condition whatever echo signal which we get back there will be a shift in frequency of the received signal so this frequency shift if the target is moving it is called as the doppler shift which will be seeing in the subsequent sections so this doppler shift is helpful in understanding our required target from the other unwanted uh, environmental factors okay so there may be some stationary unwanted factors in the environment so we will be able to distinguish our required target from all those unwanted environmental factor with the help of such doppler shift okay so understand that this is a basic principle of radar system and when we are drawing the block diagram there has to be a transmitter receiver antenna and target and most importantly indicate the this particular factor that is capital r which is a range to the target so here is the explanation in words regarding the earlier block diagram you can go through all this that is about the transmitting antenna and about the reflecting object that is our target which is going to give back the echo signal to the receiver so here we can mention about all those which i have stated that is regarding the range the angle of location of the target and also you can say about the frequency or the doppler shift etc now the most important factor that is to measure the range or the distance it is determined by measuring the time taken for the radar signal to travel to the target and back okay so we can consider this parameter or the time parameter to be the tr parameter that is taken by the pulse to travel to the target and return back as echo so since the electromagnetic energy propagates say with the speed of a light we can consider the speed factor that is a c is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so here we are having a single antenna which is used for the transmission and reception so it is done with the help of a duplexer so the function has to isolate the receiver during the transmission and then separate the transmitter while the reception that is while receiving back the echo signal then there should be a protection of the receiver from a high power transmitter and it uh, we can use a single antenna that is a main advantage okay we do not have to go for two antennas we can use a single antenna if you are using a proper duplexer so once the transmitted pulse is emitted by the radar a sufficient length of time must elapse to allow any echo signal to return and be detected before the next pulse may be transmitted so this is important because then only we can properly analyze our received signal if there is no sufficient time then it will result in a unambiguous range now speaking of the range to a target now the range or the distance is what you mean by range in radar so this distance or the range r what will be it it will be speed into time now here speed is the speed of the light that is c which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second and the time factor you can see tr it is divided by a factor of 2 because of the two way propagation of the radar okay so the range can be either in kilometer or nautical miles and this factor tr can be in microseconds now once the transmitted pulse is emitted by the radar there should be a sufficient length of time to elapse to allow any echo signals to return and be detected before the next pulse may be transmitted if the pulse repetition frequency is too high then what happens that is we mean the repetition frequency is very high 
means that our time period is very short so the time between the pulses of the signal which we are transmitting from the radar transmitter that is very important now if there is no sufficient time period between these pulses which is emitted or if the repetition frequency is very high what will happen some of the echo signals they will arrive after the transmission of the next pulse so there will be a error found and ambiguities in measuring range might result so such type of echoes which arrive after the transmission of next pulse they are called as second time around or multiple time around echoes that is there will be a confusion we have transmitted a pulse but before we analyze that particular echo signal what happens we have the transmission of another pulse so there will be some ambiguities in measuring the range such an echo would appear to be at much shorter range than the actual and it would be misleading if it were not known to be a second time around echo or we can even result in multiple time around echoes now about the term maximum unambiguous range that is due to a second time round or multiple time round echoes so we have already seen what do you mean by this problem in the last slide so if we are not keeping a proper time interval between the transmitting pulses that is we are not keeping a proper pulse repetition frequency there may be some error occurred in measuring the range so this range this problem is referred to as maximum unambiguous range so it is a range beyond which the targets appear as second time around echoes is called as the maximum unambiguous range and it is expressed as so since range is distance it can be expressed as the speed into time so it can be represented as c into tp divided by 2 where tp can be the time period between the pulses or in terms of frequency both can be used interchangeably so if express in terms of pulse repetition frequency in hertz this can be represented as what c divided by 2 into fp now we will come to a simple form of the radar equation or free space radar range equation okay can be expressed as a radar equation or a free space radar range equation so this is going to relate the range of the radar to the various characteristics of transmitter receiver antenna target environment so this equation is helpful to be used as a design equation of radar so it is useful not just as a means for determining the maximum distance that is a range from the radar to the target but it can serve both as a tool for understanding the radar operation and as a basis for radar design so let pt be the radiated power and if an isotropic antenna is used so isotropic antenna is a one which is uniformly radiating in all direction and here we consider it to be a lossless and let pt be the transmitted power radiated power so the power density that is the power radiated per unit area say at a distance of range r from the radar so what will be the power density transmitted power divided by area so here the area we consider is a area of a sphere that is 4 pi r square since the distance is at a point of r from the radar so transmitter power divided by the surface area of a imaginary sphere of a radius of r so it is given by pt divided by 4 pi r squared now usually the radar employ directive antennas say direct radiated power into some particular direction only that is directionally only it will radiate the power having a very narrow beam but that is what is required for radar antennas now how could you express the general gain equation of antenna we usually write it as a ratio of the power which is radiated by the required antenna to the power radiated by the isotropic antenna if both are provided with the same input power that is how generally you express a gain of antenna now here we have already written in the last slide about the power which will be radiated from a isotropic antenna that is we have expressed it as pt divided by 4 pi r square okay so when we are writing the gain it will be the power density from a directive antenna 
to the power which is radiated by a isotropic antenna so from the last slide that is pt divided by 4 pi r square so the power density from our required directive antenna is given by pt into g divided by 4 pi r square now what we have to understand here is that whatever power it is being incident to the target most of it it will be radiated into the space only some portion is going to come back to the receiver side and that particular echo signal is our interest because we are going to make an inference based on the echo signal which we are receiving. Now, when we are saying about the power density of the echo signal at red R, we have to consider what will be the power density of the received signal which is coming back from the target. So, that power density if we are representing say as sigma here in this case. So, how can you write the total power density of the echo signal at red R? PTG by 4 pi r square into sigma divided by 4 pi r square. Okay. So, here what we mean by the radar cross section is the cross section of the target. So, it is a characteristic of a particular target. It is a measure of its size as seen by the radar. The radar antenna captures a portion of the echo power. If the effective area of the receiving antenna is denoted by AE, the power which is received by the radar can be expressed as how it will be the multiplication factor of its area of the receiving antenna into the power density, total power density of the echo signal at the radar. So that will be PTG by 4 pi r square into sigma by 4 pi r square into AE. Okay. So simplifying we get the relationship between the power received and the power transmitted equation of a radar as such. So, in the previous equation we have seen that the total power which is being received by the receiver antenna is a multiplication of the power density which is incident on it multiplied by the effective area of the receiving antenna. Now, there in that equation we have a term of R which is indicating the range. What we mean by the term maximum radar range? It is a distance beyond which a target it cannot be detected. So, when will it occur? It occurs when the received signal, that is a received echo power signal, it will be equal to a minimum detectable signal. So, instead of PR, we can now replace it by S minimum. And then writing the R max equation, we get the equation as such. Then this is a standard relation connecting the gain and the effective area of an antenna G is equal to 4 pi AE divided by lambda square. So here we have other two forms of radar equation. One expressed in terms of gain of the antenna and other expressed in terms of effective area of receiving antenna. So in this particular section we have seen about the basic concept of a radar, its basic block diagram and the simple form of radar range equation.